Welcome to White Lecture Online. In order to get a better understanding of the principle of least action, let's take a look at it in terms of the energy equation that we're also familiar with. So again, let's have a little drawing here where we have an initial starting point of the particle, an end point of the particle. Let's assume that we're gaining potential energy and losing kinetic energy in this example. And let's presume that the black line here represents the path of least action. And then we're going to consider an alternate path. And then we're going to see why the particle will not take the alternate path. The particle will always take the path of least action and try to figure out why it does that. So first of all, when you think about it, the alternate path would require work to speed the particle up because if it takes the same amount of time to go along the red path compared to along the black path here, since the red path is longer, you would need to go faster. And in order to go faster, you would have to put in some work to make it go faster. And then, presumably, to, in order to end at the same location, you probably want to then put in some work to slow it down. Otherwise, you get there too fast. And so, work would be put in to go faster and work would be put in to slow it back down. But during that time that it's sped up and before it slows back down, the average velocity would be greater and therefore the kinetic energy would be greater. And now we'll go back to the concept of the action where the action is equal to the integral of the difference between the kinetic energy and the potential energy along the path and we integrate it over the entire duration of that path. And of course, if the kinetic energy will be larger, than it would be along the black path, then of course the difference between those two would not be a minimum. It will take a path so that the difference between them is a minimum and therefore the alternate path would not be a good path. It still doesn't tell us how we find that best path, the path of, uh, of the, uh, the minimum, but we'll show you how to do that later. So now let's go to the equation, the energy equation, where we have the work put into the system plus the initial potential energy plus the initial kinetic energy equals the final potential energy plus the final kinetic energy plus the energy that's lost. If we now rearrange the terms, you can see that we end up with the difference between the initial and the final kinetic energy, and we end up in the difference between the initial and the final potential energy. But now we're going to flip those around and put the negative in front. So here we have, now we presume for a moment, that we start out with a greater amount of kinetic energy and the kinetic energy decreases and whatever the loss is in kinetic energy will then be increased in the potential energy. So the loss in kinetic energy will equal the gain in potential energy. Then notice when we flip these around and put the negative outside, we have the difference in the kinetic energy or the kinetic energy lost. The initial minus the final will be a positive quantity. It will be the amount of energy lost, in this case kinetic energy. And then since the final potential energy would be greater than the initial potential energy, this will always be a positive quantity as well. That's the potential energy gained. And so we take the difference between the kinetic energy lost and the potential energy gained. That difference should equal zero if this goes to zero. Now again, this goes to zero if no work is put into the system other than what's done by the gravitational force but that's then contained within the potential energy and that there's no friction encountered so that when both of those go to zero and that would be the case on the path of least action then we can see at least in a simplified form we'll see that later then we can say that the difference between these two should be equal to zero and that means that the action which is then the integral of the average kinetic energy, or I should say the kinetic energy along the path as a function of time, minus the potential energy along the path as a function of time, the difference between those two summed up over the entire path will therefore be a minimum. And so the, the way to write that is that the average kinetic energy along the path minus the average potential energy along the path is a minimum. And that's the best way to think about the concept of the principle of least action. And now you can see why the, the particle would not take any other path because any other path would require additional work to speed it up and additional work to slow it down. The additional work would then result in a greater kinetic energy. A greater kinetic energy will then result in a bigger difference between the two. And a bigger difference in the two would mean not the path of least action. And therefore, that's not the path the particle would take. And that's the best way to think about it from a conceptual perspective. We'll show you later on with some examples why that is actually so.